Tonight at 6, Joe Biden inches closer to the presidency. Joe Biden now has the lead statewide in Pennsylvania. That lead is now set to expand. Denver tells people to be home by 10. But we need personal responsibility, and that's what we're leaning in on. We accidentally solve a crime. Like a flash in the corner of the screen was this distinct blue bike. And Keystone wins a race to first chair. This skiing is super fun. And good evening, and thanks for joining us for a special digital edition of Denver 7 News at 6. Well, I'm glad you're with us tonight. Uh, right now, ABC News is airing a two-hour-long special report on the state of the presidential election. And since you have the option of watching that, we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. Just very quickly, Biden currently sits at 253 of the necessary 270 electoral votes. An expected win in Nevada will give him another six. Currently, Biden is holding a 38,000-vote lead in Arizona, and that lead is slipping but not necessarily enough to give Trump a win. Now, in Pennsylvania, the president's supporters held signs reading, count legal votes. Election workers in that state are, and it has given Biden a 20,000 vote lead over the president that continues to grow tonight. Now, Biden also has taken a 4,000 vote lead in Georgia, and that race appears heading for a recount. The former vice president is expected, but not confirmed, to speak tonight to address the nation in a primetime address. An exact time's not been given, and of course we'll bring that to you when it, and if it happens. And the numbers are predictable, and so is today's response from Denver Mayor Michael Hancock. Now figures first, a record 3,400 cases of coronavirus reported by the state tonight. More than 1,000 hospital beds occupied by patients suspected or confirmed to have it. The mayor hoped people would see the writing on the wall and start taking more precautions, and since that apparently is not happening, we have what's known as the Home by 10 order taking effect on Sunday. There will be no fans at school athletic events. Bars that don't serve food won't serve anyone. And most businesses will close in-person operations at 10. Grocery stores and pharmacies can't stay open, but they too have to stop selling booze at that hour. You can be in a restaurant up until 10 o'clock. Well, we ask people to be home by 10 o'clock. So we ask you to plan ahead, plan to enjoy your dinner with your family and be home by 10 o'clock. Um, if you decide to go walk your dog at 10, 15, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, that is not something that we are um, uh, concerned about in this order. Uh, what we're concerned about is the public commingling uh, uh, after 10 p.m. The mayor did his best to avoid calling this a curfew. Some business owners, though, are unlikely to see the difference. Liz Gillardi has that part of the story. Restaurants are already operating at a reduced capacity and now they'll have to close early when that new home by 10 order goes into effect on Sunday. Denver Mayor Michael Hancock said we're on a dangerous path. He says this latest order is yet another tool the city is using in an attempt to stop the rapid spread of the virus, but he did stop short of calling it a curfew. The general manager of the Milwaukee Street Tavern says they were anxiously awaiting the mayor's announcement and they are worried about the possibility of another stay at home order. The hardest part about it is all of the rumors that come about before there actually is an announcement. Um, I mean, we were worried that there might be a full shutdown again and we would only be able to do carry out. So, I mean, I guess best case scenario for today was that it's just a mandatory 10 p.m. curfew. Um, but still, that's going to hurt us. The order will be in effect for the next 30 days, except for Thanksgiving. But the mayor encouraged people to keep those celebrations small and only with members of their household. Liz Gillardi, Denver 7. Now, Tri-County Health isn't shy about calling its new order a curfew. As of tomorrow, everyone except essential workers are to be off the streets of Adams County by 10 o'clock. The positivity rate is currently 12.7% in Adams County. But nearly 24 hours later, still no sign tonight of a missing boy in Jefferson County. 12-year-old Josiah Cerna was last seen at his home near Golden. Deputies brought out dogs and drones today to look for him, but unfortunately came up empty. The East Troublesome Fire's reign of terror lasted days and cleanup could take years. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn tonight with a family sifting through the rubble. When does a charred, mangled chair become a blessing? This is the old ice cream chair. Or a mostly intact figurine become a treasure? I'm just like in awe. Certainly, when they are the few things you can salvage. And you figure everything would have melted. For Diane Williamson, this is a tough moment. It's been home for 
46 years. The kids were born and raised here, and it's home. It's the first time she's seen the destruction since that fateful night. I got a text from a, a girlfriend's a daughter saying, get out and get out now. Left the front door unlocked, back door unlocked, and headed down the road. She knew this day was coming. She already had confirmation her home was gone. Channel 7 News went by and showed it on that. Yet still, it doesn't make it easy. Yeah. What does make it more bearable is the amount of support. You can see what kind of um, group of people we have that live up here, that everybody's willing to help each other. Like Father Peter stopping by. Well, truly the body of Christ, that we need to take care of each other. It's beautiful just how many people have shown up in, in different ways. And Even if those helping hands sometimes fumble. That's right. Diane's t-shirt says it all. Together, we are grand. We're going to get there. She says she will without question rebuild. And something like this, you know, everybody reacts in a different way. And I feel like, um, you know, I have to look at this as a new adventure and we will rebuild. And there are those treasures, those few blessings that remain in the midst of destruction. My deceased um, husband had built the bluebird houses and they survived the fire. With photojournalist Jacob Curtis in Grand County. We're survivors. I can't imagine going anywhere else. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. Larimer County confirming tonight that a total of 460 buildings were destroyed in the Cameron Peak Fire. 224 were homes. 42 of those were primary residences. A second man has died and a third person remains in critical condition following a shooting in Denver. It happened early Wednesday morning near Locust and MLK. No arrests have been made and the motive still unknown. Slowly but surely, crossing attendants are being removed from the end line. That is a sign that the rail stop is running smoothly. Guards will remain at 100th Avenue and at 72nd. Well, Contact Denver 7 has done a lot of good for a lot of people. And this time, we helped by accident. Denver 7's Lance Hernandez tonight with the tale of a stolen bicycle and its eagle-eyed owner. It means more to me than, than the, the monetary value. Nick Owen says a thief walked into his garage and stole his blue trek on election day. His wife had taken their daughter to school. You just feel violated. They use an app to keep track of when the garage door opens and closes. About eight minutes after she left, the door had opened itself and remained open for two hours. That's when the thief snuck in. The measure would hike Denver sales tax 0.25%. The following day, Nick was watching Denver 7 and saw our story about ballot measure 2B, the sales tax to help the homeless. Caught my eyes as well because the encampment started showing all these bicycles. His wife recognized the library in the background. So they hopped in their SUV, drove to 13th and Broadway, and spotted the tent in our story and noticed a blue bike just like his. He called police and began staking it out. I'm getting some eyeballs and some comments like, are you lost? Police didn't show. Soon, a man exited the tent and grabbed the bike. I decided to, to intercept him at 14th and Broadway and, and confront him about it. Nick told him, I know that's not your bike. Give it back to me. He says the man and a friend sized him up. Said, I don't need this bike in not so many words. And handed it off to me. Denver police say 2,908 bikes were reported stolen in 2018. That number jumped to 3,283 in 2019. And as of October 31st this year, 3,522. Police say they can't recover stolen bikes if the owners fail to register them. Each bike has them roughly in the same place. Nick says he got his bike home right and here. checked the serial number with his paperwork. It was a match. My wife and I were just like high-fiving, hooting and hollering. It was, uh, it was quite a moment. He's glad he got his bike back and that he was watching our newscast. Lance Hernandez, Denver 7. Boy, we are so happy this story worked out the way it did, but please let the police handle these um, any dicey situation. For everything else, contact Denver 7. There's the number to call, and email works fine, too. Coming up, get baked. We'll make uh, some specialty breads like a peat smoked barley, uh, rye bread. The demand kept getting bigger and bigger. Go on a trip. Denver International Airport is proud to be the weird airport. And enjoy the weekend. Yes, we'll have one more day like this tomorrow, but then there's snow on the way to Colorado.